We all have family spats at one time or another. Most of them just blow over in a few hours or days. After all, blood is thicker than water, right? But during a time of intense family conflict, when a father's dark, disgusting secret is discovered by his sons, it can spark a new level of hatred, one that threatens to fan the flames until this burning issue becomes an out of control, raging fire. It's only a matter of time until the whole thing burns to the ground. Viewer discretion is advised for this educational documentary. Welcome or welcome back to Dark Case Documentaries. I bring you true crime, disturbing stories and other things that you may later regret knowing with regular uploads every week. Please do join the quickly growing, incredibly supportive Dark Case family by hitting subscribe now and turning on notifications. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. If your name is on screen right now, then you're a legend. Let's get straight into today's dark case. Our love and respect goes out to all those that knew and loved Dylan and all those affected by this case. Dylan Redwine was born on the 6th of February 1999. He grew up in the idyllic town of Bayfield in southern Colorado. It's in the Durango area, a small tight-knit community and the perfect place to raise a family. At least it was for Dylan's parents, Mark and Elaine. They'd been married since 1989, and over the course of their 18-year marriage, they had two boys together, Dylan and his older brother, Corey, who was born in 1992. The two brothers were adventurous at heart. They grew up exploring the outdoors. Dylan idolised his older brother. They were incredibly close and got on well. But then again, Dylan pretty much got on well with everyone. Even as a child, he had an infectious energy that was difficult to ignore. By 13 years old, he was witty, compassionate, and had dreams as big as the Colorado sky. From the outside, he had everything going for him. Great friends, a great family, a great life ahead of him. But the picture-perfect family wasn't so perfect behind closed doors. Father Mark had a job as a foreman with United Pipeline and often worked away. This possibly led to the fact that Elaine felt the marriage had run its course. In 2007, she filed for divorce. It's safe to say that Mark didn't take it too well. If he was unhappy, then everyone else was going to be unhappy too, and he made sure to make the divorce as difficult as possible. Mother Elaine got full custody of her two sons, and she then very quickly moved 300 miles away to Colorado Springs. Mark had visitation rights, but he didn't really use them. With his marital relationship now in the toilet, Mark's relationship with the boys fell apart too. Corey and Dylan's relationship with their dad became strained, and although they still had friends back in their hometown, they didn't spend a huge amount of time going back there. In 2010, they saw a side of Mark they had rarely seen before, a pretty angry and violent one after witnessing a fight between their parents. And from there, they chose not to visit him again. However, sadly, Dylan was still a minor. This means that he was forced to spend his court-ordered visits with his father. One of these visits was due for Thanksgiving in 2012. Dylan didn't want to go, but he didn't have a choice. His older brother Corey was 20 years old at this point, and no longer under the control of the courts or his parents. Corey didn't have to see his father, so he simply chose not to. This means it would just be Dylan, alone, going to visit his dad. But Dylan was scared of his dad and he didn't want to be left alone with him. However, this was only due to be a short trip. 
a get in, get out and suck it up kind of arrangement. At least that's what he told himself. On the 18th of November 2012, 13-year-old Dylan Redwine hopped on a plane. He flew from Colorado Springs to Durango La Plata Airport. Father Mark picked up Dylan at the airport and off they went home. He asked if he could crash with a friend that evening, that is, instead of staying at home with his dad. However, this idea was shot down. Instead, Dylan arranged to visit his friend's house early the next morning at 6.30am. The next morning came, now the 19th. Father Mark left to run some errands. He wasn't used to having a 13-year-old in the house, and he had to pick up some bits and bobs from the supermarket. When he left, he said Dylan was sleeping on the couch. He came back a couple of hours later and said Dylan was gone. He assumed he'd gone to see his friend as planned. After all, he hadn't seen his friends for quite some time, so this really did make sense. But hours later, he tried to get a hold of Dylan, but couldn't. He still hadn't come home and he wasn't answering his phone. Mark started ringing around and nobody had seen or even heard from his son. The friend that he'd arranged to meet at 6.30am that morning said he hadn't turned up. When he texted him at 6.46am asking where he was, he received no response. This means Dylan had just disappeared. Unsure what to do and out of his depth, Mark started texting his ex-wife who was immediately concerned. This was her baby and she was helpless, stuck miles away in Colorado Springs. While Mark's first thought was that he'd run off in a mood, he assumed that he would just come back when he was hungry. But Elaine didn't think that this sounded like her Dylan. He wouldn't run away and if he did, he would have called his mum. At half past five, Dylan's mother, 300 miles away, filed a missing persons report before setting off for her ex-husband's home. Police immediately started looking for Dylan. Hundreds of volunteers came out in full force. Police, helicopters, divers, everyone was on the lookout. The mountains were checked, the woods, the area near Mark's home, but nothing. A bloodhound from Albuquerque went out with a task force. Bloodhounds can pick up a scent up to six weeks after an event, but even a hound couldn't find a sign of Dylan. Everyone was searching for Dylan, except his father. According to Elaine and Corey, Mark was sticking to his guns that his 13-year-old son had simply run away. He was just acting out. Whilst everyone else scoured the area, Mark was just chilling out on a couch, having a beer, watching the football. But about two weeks after the disappearance, a runaway was ruled out due to the surrounding circumstances. A lack of cell phone activity, his friends texting him to no response, no contact with his mum, and not having taken any of his belongings with him. Dylan hadn't run away. Someone had taken him. A task force was set up made of five different agencies. The investigation was switched from where to who. With the gravity of the situation now finally hitting, Mark was cooperative with the police. His truck and his house were searched, all in an effort to piece together Dylan's last hours before he disappeared. Mark had this to say to local media. He was the light of my life and he, he meant everything to me. And I just want him home, just like everybody else does. But even with Mark cooperating, the search for Dylan was fruitless. Weeks started to go by, turning into months. And then Elaine remembered something she thought may have been relevant. It was about Dylan. In 2011, a year before Dylan disappeared, Mark, Dylan and Corey went on a road trip together. When they were at a motel, Dylan found something on his father's laptop. Realising that what he was looking at was weird, he woke up his older brother, Corey, and they took the laptop into the bathroom. They locked the door behind them while their father was asleep. They discovered pictures of their father wearing women's underwear and diapers. And 
eating feces from a diaper. The two brothers swore to never speak of it again, and understandably, they tried to erase these images from their brains. By the way, I'm trying to do the same thing. After all, who wants to have an image of their dad eating that? But a year later, a couple of months before he went missing, Big Brother Corey told their dad that they had both seen the pictures, and that he had taken pictures as evidence on his cell phone at the time. This was supposed to be for protection. If he hurt them, they had a counterattack ready. Elaine was now starting to worry that Corey's counterattack had backfired. The search for Dylan continued as winter turned to spring and then to summer. After accusations from his ex-wife and oldest son, Mark Redwine decided to go on Dr. Phil, the talk show, and take a polygraph test. Polygraphs are otherwise known as lie detector tests. They are known to be unreliable and are not admissible in court. Mark offered to take the polygraph test to prove that he had nothing to do with the disappearance of his son, Dylan. But when it came time for the test, Mark asked for a day's delay. Then the next morning, just when a test was getting started, Mark said that he didn't feel well, an automatic disqualifier. Dr. Phil pleaded with him again hours later, but in the end, Mark Redwine decided not to do the test. He never gave a reason, at least not a good one. On the 27th of June 2013, seven months after he was last seen, Dylan was finally found, or at least part of him. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation confirmed that bones that had been found during a search in late June did indeed belong to Dylan Redwine. They were found about 10 miles from Mark's home in a wooded area. When Mark's son from his first marriage called him to give him the news, the news that his youngest son had been found deceased, Mark's alleged response was, Oh well, you know happens, right? Police couldn't find the entire skeleton. They were not able to piece together what had happened from the limited remains. However, there were no signs of obvious trauma and no clues that could have helped investigators. Well, there are nearly a hundred supporters here at Dylan Redwine's prayer vigil. These are the same people that went out into the woods and searched for this 13-year-old for several months. Now that Dylan's remains were found, they want answers. Authorities say there are no suspects in the homicide investigation. They also add both of Dylan's parents have been cooperating. I spoke to both Elaine and Mark Redwine. The two are divorced, and there is clear tension between the two. Supporters of Dylan's mom say they believe that Mark had something to do with Dylan's disappearance. Mark Mark Redwine says his priority is to find all of Dylan's remains and give his son a proper burial. With only a small portion of his remains being located, it's very important that we find the rest of our son so that we can try to get as much of him as we can because obviously we want to put him to rest and give him a proper burial. Mark's theory was that this was an animal attack, a bear, a cougar, or a mountain lion. He said he thought that his son had left the house, gone for a walk, and then gotten eaten. Or maybe a hunter may have accidentally shot him on the side of the mountain, and then they panicked and dumped his body. Dylan's bones were found at a typical dump site. This means a site that's close to a road or access point, or within 50 yards of one and also the site is downhill from that access point. Mark's hunter theory was unlikely. The mountain was closed to hunters on Thanksgiving. However, the hunter story did seem more realistic than the animal attack. Do you know where Dylan is? Failed. Right. Because I believe that his mom had something to do with this. What's that have to do with do you know where Dylan because is? Because the way I interpreted the question, do I know where he's at? I don't know where he's at specifically, but and I know should, that mom has everything. You should that question, don't you think? Well, do you know where Dylan is? I don't know where he's at. I think I know where he's at. That was, that was how I interpreted the question. Dylan's death was subsequently ruled to be a homicide at this time, but the police were no closer to finding the killer. The case went cold. We made plans to hang out. And yeah, I was looking forward to it. It was just like a whole seven months of 
all this hard work and hope and stuff just shattered. When I was around with Dylan and his father, or when I was around them, they seemed like uh, like best friends. I mean, they were really close. Two years later, Dylan's skull was found, roughly five miles from where his bones had been located. Despite the elapsed time, the skull gave the authorities the break in the case that they needed. Dylan had suffered a sharp force injury and a skull fracture, situated above his left eye at or around the time of his death. Mark's first wife, Betsy, would speak to the police, saying Mark had told her, quote, if he ever had to get rid of a body, he would leave it in the mountains. Now, remember when Mark's house was searched at the beginning of the investigation? He was compliant, but he probably shouldn't have been. They found blood in Mark's living room, on the couch, the floor, the coffee table, and on the rug. Mark's girlfriend at the time tried to give a cover story for him, saying that Dylan had cut his finger a year previously in 2011. But now, with the skull found with the injury, doubts were rising. Five years after Dylan disappeared in August of 2017, Mark Redwine was arrested. He was arrested in Bellingham, Washington, where he had been working as a truck driver. He was charged with second degree murder and child maltreatment resulting in death. The trial began in 2021. Mark pleaded not guilty. The prosecution argued that the murder of Dylan Redwine was due to the photographs he and his brother had seen. Corey took to the stand and explained that his little brother Dylan wanted to use the photos as leverage in an argument with his father. His father, who was still locked in a contentious custody battle with his mother. In August 2012, Dylan sent a text message to Corey saying, Hey, send me those poop pics of Papa. Because because he gave me a speech about you guys being a bad example, and I want to show him who he really is. However, Corey didn't send the pictures, and by the next day it seemed the argument was over. He never found out whether or not Dylan had confronted his father, but the prosecution speculated on the evening of the 18th of November, Dylan brought up the photos and Mark lost it, flying into a fit of rage. They stated that it was most likely blunt force trauma that killed Dylan. They then alleged that Father Mark removed his son's head. The defence, however, went with the animal attack story, but the prosecution was prepared. They had a bear expert explain to the jury hibernation patterns. These patterns said it was extremely unlikely that a bear would have had anything to do with Dylan's passing. After a day of deliberation, Mark Redwine was found guilty of murdering his son. In October 2021, a La Plata County judge sentenced Mark Redwine to 48 years in prison. The judge said, I have trouble remembering a criminal defendant who has shown such an utter lack of remorse. This leads me to believe that you need significant punishment and you need to be removed from society for a long period of time. To the making of this video, Mark has never explained what happened that night behind closed doors on that fateful day in November 2012. It's fair to say it's unlikely he ever will. Do you think the punishment fits the crime here? What do you think could be done to avoid something like this happening again in the future? Let me know down in the comments. Be careful out there and I'll see you soon. Mona Corona.